morning. We have a few more that are um, coming in, but I think we can go ahead and start. Half a day. Thank you for joining us today. Thank you very much to our facilitator for this afternoon, Mr. Anthony Godwin, our MLS guru. So uh, without further delay, Anthony, please go ahead and uh, take the floor. Thank you, Peggy. Uh, Peggy, can you hear me okay? Yes. Okay, so first of all, I'd like to welcome all of you. So today we're going to actually be looking at uh, the quick search features. I'm sure some of you wondered what happened to the full search feature, but obviously that went away. And then we were left with the quick search. And I'm sure some of you said, oh my goodness, what is this? And you went in there and it, it didn't really offer you a whole lot of utility, maybe a little frustrating. And then, um, but now we have the quick search feature. And of course, we want to make it uh, easier for you to use that feature and to help you set up your own quick searches. So before we do that, I wanted to show you what I mean and what I'm talking about. So um, I've logged into a company, my company account, um, because I wanted to show you that um, if, you're, if you're a broker and you create quick searches, you create your quick searches in your company account. So these quick searches can then be shared automatically with the agents in your office. So I'm going to be using the company account to do this. Um, individual agents and associate brokers can also create their own quick searches. And if, and if they want to, they can share those um, out as well. But our focus today will be on, um, on quick searches. And then I've got a little bonus for you um, towards the end of the, uh, of, this, of the session. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna click on the menu up here and I'm gonna click on quick search, which is right over here. Um, hoping you guys can all see that. So I'm going to click on click on quick search. Uh, is it, is it my screen is blurry. Let me see what I can do to fix that. Hmm. Is it still blurry, uh, Peggy? Um, it's a little bit more. I think it needs to just get focused a little. Okay, let me, let me go ahead and zoom in a bit more. Zoom in on Chrome. Is that better? Yes, much better. Okay, cool. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and I just clicked on quick search. Um, actually, I clicked on report trainer. So we're gonna click on quick search and um, um, actually, it is not taking that. I'm gonna have to, sorry, I'm gonna have to zoom back out a little bit again. Let's see, zoom out. Out because I lost. Okay, why is it doing that? About one second here. Okay, I don't know why it's giving me this, but it's not doing what I want it to do. There we go. I'm gonna use um, single family. So on this carrot over here, you click down and you select a search type and I'm gonna click on single family for sale. So if you click on, on the, um, the current search options, which you have, for example, are residential for sale or rent. So if you click on those, you only have a very few number of choices of um, search criteria that you can actually choose from. There's only a few and you want more than that. So I'm gonna choose one that I've already created and we'll go ahead and recreate this later on. So I'm gonna choose single family for sale and now you'll see all of these options here that I've added into the quick search template because that's what we're gonna be doing next is creating this quick search template. So now I can select the village that I want. Um, I can also select, um, are we still blurry? Uh, I think she said we are. Let me go ahead and zoom, zoom in a little bit more. Is that better? 
Okay, good. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and click. Now it's going to, of course, uh, change the. Um, uh, so I'm going to choose to mooning. I'm going to choose a uh, current price. I want homes between 350. I'm not going to get anything into mooning. Let's put three, 450. And um, mm, well, let's leave it at. <laughs> so I'm not going to get. Oh, I got 15. And then you can also um, look at views. I want something with a with a ocean view. Let's see if I get anything. I got one. Okay, so um, that's fine. So I'm going to click on the results and take a look at what I've got. And there's there's the property that shows up. So obviously we've created other quick searches on here. For example, single family for rent. And these are quick searches that you can create yourself. There's also one on here, which we're gonna talk about a little bit later called cross property search. So how do you create your quick searches? So first we're gonna go back to the menu, click on the menu button and then scroll down and scroll all the way down to my quick searches. So if you, once you click on my quick searches, then you're able to go in here and click new, okay? And I'm going for, for today, I'm just gonna do a single family quick search. So I'm gonna type SFD quick search, because I've got a few of these on here. And the property type I'm gonna use for this quick search is called single family for sale, because that's what I want. I'm gonna leave this box checked that says this template is inheritable, which means that the agents um, in my office can all get it. And the view that I want is the uh, residential uh, with photo. That's the view that I want. So you'll have all of these views. Some of you have more views. Some of you have less views where it says default view because you can obviously create your own views and other views, but GAR has provided you with quite a few views that you could use um, without creating your own. But if you do want to create your own, you can. Some of the ones that you see here, um, I've created and we use them internally. So you won't see those on your list of default views but you can definitely create your own. Um, and that's, that's another process um, under creating views. So we're gonna click next. Then you have a big field list over here of all the fields, including the, um, the detail fields that you can actually add to your search. So this, what we're doing now is we're cre creating a template. So once we save this template, we can come back and use it again and again and again. So the first thing that I want, that I want in my template is of course, I want to know the, um, the, the status. So I'm going to click on status. Uh, so it's active or pending or um, uh, sold or whatever. Uh, so click that, I'm going to add that field. Now I want to go ahead and add in the, um, the address of the property. So I'm going to go ahead and put in the house number or house and building number. So I'm going to search for that. And then I'm going to go in and um, click on that. Let's see here, it is building house number right there. Then I want to go ahead and put in the street name. And street name right there. And I want to go ahead and put in the postal code. Postal code right there. And then I want to put in the bedrooms. I'm going to go to search my bedrooms and baths. Um, Actually, I'm sorry, village. First one, the village. And then um, I didn't put that in the right order. We'll come back and fix that later. So I'm going to go ahead and put in the bedrooms and the bathrooms. And that is going to be total, total bedrooms, total bathrooms. And then I also want to be able to search by view. So I'm going to select view as one of my Items I want to search by, I want to be able to search by uh, the year built. I might, my buyer might not want to have you know, older, older homes. I might just want newer homes. I want to be able to search that way as well. I want to be able to search by zoning. Um, I want to be able to search by legal description. I may have someone that's looking for a specific property in a certain legal description or a certain tract. So I'm going to go ahead and make that a searchable field. So I'm going to choose tract and then I'm going to choose block. So I can search by all of these and I'm going to choose lot number and then I'm going to choose uh, phase and increment. So I've got all that in here. And then I'm also going to choose, um, I think that's enough. That's track, block, lot is, is good enough for me to search for the legal description. Then I might want to be able to search for some other things up here. Um, let's just take a look at some others. Uh, 
not, not really flood zone. Square footage, I might want to search for, for square footage. I might want to, um, oops, not that one, I'm taking that out. Square footage, I might want to search by living area or lot size. Maybe my customer wants, you know, a certain size lot. And I'm gonna leave, that's enough for now. Um, so I go through the list and I want to check the order that I would like the fields to appear in when I actually open it up to search on them later on. So I noticed, for example, that postal code should really be after the village. So I click on the postal code and I go over here and I click move down. And it'll, it'll adjust the field order. So you can move the fields up and down. If I see something in here that I really don't want to be in this list, I can click on the field name and click remove and it takes it away. So we're done. So I'm really, I'm pretty much done and I like this template the way it is. So I click on save. Once you save it, it's now in your list of search, of searches, available quick searches. And it's right there under SFD quick search. So I'm gonna go back to the menu. I wanna see what, how that search works for me. So I'm gonna click on the menu. I'm gonna go back to quick search. And now if I look at my list of available quick searches, which will pop up right here, I scroll down this list and there right here, all the way down here is my SFD quick search. Now you'll notice um, what I did uh, for, for our office searches is I started them out with a zero because I don't wanna have to wade through all of these searches that are on here. I just want the main ones that I want to show up on top. So this is alphabetical. So zero starts obviously, you know, with, then it goes to one, two, three, four, and then it goes to ABC. So, so that's just a little tip for you. So if you want to do the same thing for your office, you can, you're welcome to do it that way as well. So you just put a little zero and dash in the name of your search. So with this, in this particular case, I didn't do that. So I'm gonna scroll down here and look for quick, quick search. So now the fields that we chose earlier for this quick search all show up here. So let's say right now I'm really looking for comps and I really want to find solds. So uh, zoom slightly, please. Okay, zoom slightly. How's that? Better? Yes. Okay. So I zoomed in a little bit more. Uh, okay, good. So you can click on, I just want to look at closed and I only want to look at last year to this year, closed comps, because I'm trying to do some comps. And I really only want to focus, for example, on Timuni. So now all the fields that I chose earlier to show up in my template for this SFT quick search are right here. So I can go in here now and I can click on my village, which is Timuni, because I'm going to be getting a brand new listing here. And I only want to look really at, so it'll zoom on the map to the Timuni area where things have closed. And I really only want to focus on four bedroom homes because that's what my, my house I'm trying to compare to is four bedrooms. And um, I don't want to click on view because I'm probably going to lose most of them. And right now, I, I really want to look at homes that are only above, um, let's just say 2,000 square feet. Let's see what I eliminate. So there's six houses. So when I click on the six houses, then all six houses pop up in the list. And of course, you can take the the houses from here and you can, or the, list, the list of homes from here and you can save it um, and do your CMA with that for the solds and do the same thing with the others. So that's pretty much what I wanted to show you as far as using the quick search that you just created. Um, does anybody have any questions at this point before I move along to setting up a cross property search? And so um, I'll let Peggy uh, check and see if there's any questions out there and if there's not, then I'm going to move to creating a um, cross property search. Okay, no questions yet. Great. Okay, so we're going to head in back to our menu, the flex menu, and we're going to come down here. And we want to do what's called a uh, another quick search. We're going to click on my quick searches again. And this time we want to do, um, it's almost like a full property search or a full search, but, but we're going to set it up as a quick search. So we're going to click new, make a whole new template. So now I'm going to call this all property search. Okay. So the all property um, search, um, I'm going to, this time I'm going to go to search across all the different property types. I don't want to search for one. So I might be looking for something that might um, be reflected in all the property types. 
And some people are actually just using this as their only search. So we're gonna make this type, instead of using it as a, you know, a default view of residential, we're gonna just change it to a general view for now. And then we're gonna click next. And what you're gonna notice is you have a lot more fields because what this is doing is it's pulling the fields in here um, across, I'm sorry, the fields across all property types that are similar um, across all the different property types. So for example, you're not gonna see in here like, um, like room types and things like that because property types, like for example, resident, uh, commercial properties don't have a room type or they don't have um, pets allowed and things like that. So you're not gonna see some of these other fields in here. But it's good when you're trying to do a search across all the different property types. So you could do that this way. So for example, I'm gonna go ahead and set this one up right now. And I'm gonna click on the status, add that as one of my fields. I'm gonna go back and put in the um, building and house number and the street name. And I'm gonna put the village and I'm gonna add in the um, postal code. Um, I'm also this time, I wanna do a few more things. So I wanna do the um, total bedrooms and baths. Uh, there's bedrooms, total baths. And I wanna put the um, square footage this time as one of my fields, living area square feet, um, living area square meters. The one thing that, that is not yet permitted when you try to search is searching um, the quick search by listing agent. So we need to request um, from Flex to add that field as searchable because um, right now it, it's not, we're not able to do that. So, you know, earlier today I, was, I had someone call me about somebody's listing and um, that was expired. And it, it took a little bit of work to get to it, but I eventually found it, but it would be nice to have to be able to search by the agent also, and we currently cannot do that. So I also wanna add one more field in here and I wanna search um, by remarks. So you could also search um, by the remarks. So just to keep this simple, I'm gonna just use these fields and I'm gonna save this search as my all property search. So now um, I've got a new field, a new search called all property search right there. So I'm gonna go out of here, click menu and go back to my quick search and now what I'm gonna do is there's my, um, oh, sorry, there's the menu, drops down, and I'm gonna choose all property search, that one, the big, the capital letters. So then it's gonna open up and it's gonna show me all the listings on the MLS because I, I did not um, decide to choose one property type, I chose them all. It doesn't mean, um, for example, that you can't open this up and click on it, and turn off the ones that you don't want to search on. But I'm going to leave them all turned on. So if I only wanted to, for example, search only on the commercial space, I could just click that um, I like that. And if I just wanted to just add commercial space for rent and commercial buildings for sale, I could do that also just by clicking them and then clicking um, control and, your, and the, and the uh, left mouse button. But I want them all. So I want to search by everything. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. So I want all this, I want to search by all of the fields. So all the all of the MLS numbers are going to show up. So there's all there's 1578 active and pending listings. So what I want to do is I want to narrow that down. I just want to see the properties in all the listings on Guam that are in the village of Gadido that are active and pending. So I can just click, you know, just like you do now, and they all show up in the right panel. There's 203 listings. But I want something else. I, I, I think I want to try to do something. I want to see if anyone has type, has put the word pool, P-O-O-L, in their public remarks. So you can do wildcard searches in fields in MLS, in flex, that are alpha, alphanumeric fields. So this is one of them. So for example, I'll go here and I'll type in star P-O-O-L. Now this is going to take a little bit of time to search all these listings but I want you to bear with me because you'll see the benefit. So guess what? There's now I've reduced this to 13 listings where the agent has put the word pool in the public remarks. So if there's something else, let's say for example, the agent has put your dog, you know, this property is perfect for a dog. So you put in star D-O-G 
and it'll show up um, if, it, if it's if any agent and there's one agent that put the word dog in their public remarks or if you put in type in pets as an example in the public remarks then it'll pull up all the listings that say that so what that tells you is it would be a great idea to to be creative in your public remarks because agents um, can search for things using this wildcard search now the wildcard search does require that you put the asterisk before the word and after the word. So you'll see that there. So if I click on these five, five listings, it doesn't matter what kind of listings are, whether they're condos or their houses, because remember I chose all the listings. Um, it just so happens that these happen to all be uh, single family homes. But if I clicked on this Kalamasa, for example, and I opened it up and you look at the public remarks, renovated four bedroom, this home has covered patio, um, also great for families and pets. So there's that word pets that we looked at earlier. We're trying to search for it. So let's go back to the search that we just did and let's do, let's change this to fence, just the word F-E-N-C-E. -E. So the agent has put something in the public remarks that says house has a fence around it. So now we have 49 homes that has a fence. And yes, you could always go and search and click on the fence and all that stuff. But you know, if you're you know, creative agents, use this feature and put, put, um, put the words in your public remarks so people can search on them. So now I can guarantee you all of these homes have the word fence in them. So if you click on this one in um, Chalen Kahet in Dedido, then if you go down here, you'll see large fully fenced yard. So there you go. So that's, that's a little bonus I wanted to share with you as far as you know, some other features of the search process. But um, that is pretty much what I wanted to show you on quick searches. So does anybody have any questions at the moment on quick searches? Anthony, um, I, have, I have a question. Um, if they can search by agent. No, um, GAR would need to have, um, have that turned on. Uh, right now, it looks like it's not available for us as a field. So when we go back, I'll show you. So I'll show you, uh, if we go back to the menu, and switch on uh, or click back on um, the uh, my uh, quick searches, and I'll show you. Uh, if you look at the, let's just look at the all property search. Let's say I want to add more fields. So by the way, when you create these quick searches and you don't like the way it looks, the, the ordering of the template, you can go change it. If you want to add more fields to it, you could do that. So let's just do that with this one, okay? And so I come back here, and all the fields that you have available to you. Are right here uh, that you can use to search from. Unfortunately, listing company is here, so I could add that onto the list, but I don't have the ability to add the listing agent. So um, GAR and Flex would have to turn that on, the, turn on the ability for us to choose by agent, because right now that field is not available to us. And so if you see this available fields up here, these are the fields that have been al allowed for us to use. Um, but I could add more things. So let's just say I want to you know, I want to put in the listing agent and I also want to, I want to put in like the track number. I'll just give you another example. I won't, I won't, I won't, I don't want to bore you, but I'll just put in track number and I'll add that on here and I'll just go ahead and uh, save this. Um, and I'm not even sure it's going to let me search by um, listing agent, listing or listing company. Um, but let's go take a look. So it's not. So um, no, it doesn't. So GAR has to turn that on. So it allows us, uh, GAR through Flex MLS has to let us turn that on. But I just wanna show you, um, and that's why it's really important that we, we put the uh, lot block track numbers in here um, so that we can actually search by a track. Let's just example, I'm searching all the listings and I just wanna see what's available in track 108. And, um, and it's, it's um, let's see here, enter. So there's one listing in track 108, but that's pretty cool. So you can find, and that's Oka Towers, by the way. So that's track 108. And that agent, that nice agent was nice enough to put the track number in there. So now you can pull up, pull up, the, pull up the information. So uh, was there anything else, Peggy? But yeah, we would have to get Flex to, to change the, the listing agent and the listing company fields, as well as a sold agent. We need the sold agent also, so that we could search by those fields. Um, is there any more questions before we move on to, to the um, to the bonus the bonus round? So, any more questions, Peggy? Um, is it also um, 
is it also, uh, are we not able to also search by office? So both no, offices- No, we cannot. It, it has to be, um, those, those items have to be switched on uh, for, for, to be able to search for them. So right now we can't even choose the, um, the field uh, name as part of the template. It's, okay. it's switched off so for some reason. I don't know why it's off, but we would need Flex to turn those on so that we could do that. Would, so there, be a, a, would, there, a be a, would there be a benefit to turn these two uh, search criteria on for the members? Definitely, um, because let's say, for example, someone's driving by a house and, and they say, I, I drove by this house in Tamuni, it had a sign on it that said, you know, um, you know, Claire Delgado. And of course, you know, you love Claire Delgado, but you're glad they called you. Right? So, but now you're going to try to find the listing because they don't know the address, they can't remember the street it was on, but they remembered Claire and, you know, Claire's a beautiful woman. So of course they're going to remember her. And um, so you're like, okay, well, it's Claire's listing and it's somewhere in Jonestown. And and it would be nice if we could, and the old days, the old full search, we could do that, but this one we can't. So we need to have Flex turn that on. And the other thing is when you're looking for uh, comps, when you're like sold comps, sometimes we, you know, when you hear, we hear through the grapevine, hey, you know, um, uh, 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 Mary Lou sold this house in Tamuning. I heard her, she sold it for 1.2, but I can't find it. And I need that comp. And I've looked everywhere. The search doesn't give me the results, but I know it was Mary Lou and I know she sold it. But right now we cannot search by Mary Lou and find her um, her sold comps un unless we you know just keep figuring it out some way. So it'd be nice for us to be able to search by by listing agent, sold agent, listing office, and sold office. So those four things need to be really really be added into the available available list of search fields. Thank you, Anthony. Now. Uh, there's a question. When I search active listings, I see pending listings also. This is a waste of time. Why is it this way? It should only be active listings and not pending. Um, Gar made a decision years ago that pending and active listings would display, and that is how it is. And so if, yeah, if I go into this right now, for example, I'm going to use my my searches that I'm, because I'm used to my searches. So I'll click on SFD for sale. And I can go up here and I can click off the active. I can click off pending, turn it off. I don't want pending, but I'll tell you they're still there. So you see the, the green, all the green stuff on here. So let me just narrow, you can narrow it down. That's why it's nice to have this, you know, these templates, because now you can narrow it down. So you don't have to see so many listings. So let's say I'm looking just for Tamooning. So I click on Tamooning and now I'm really only dealing with, you know, 16 listings. I can deal with that. And even though I've turned off the pending, it's still gonna show pending. And I believe all of these that are showing are pending um, continue showings. So I'm not sure what happens if you select pending no more showings, but for sure these are pending continue showings. So they're, so um, God made a decision years ago to do this because technically they're not closed yet. And so you could still sell the listings and or still make offers on the listings if they're not closed. But in this case, you have the, these three yellow ones, one, two, three, those are definitely pending listings. If I click on it, you'll see uh, the listing, it'll say pending right there, 2.5. Congratulations to Chris Guerrero for 2.5. We love that. Thank you, Anthony. Uh, next is, does the public remarks field take only one search word at a time or can you put multiple keywords to search? Um, you know, I, I usually don't put too many because you, you might end up with no results. So I would, I would, try, um, I would try, try my best not to put too many things in there. You can try that, but um, you might end up with zero results. And so the more, the more, uh, the more ways you try to do that, the, um, you can, most, I've not actually done it where you can actually do multiple search in that field. I've only done single words and, and trained on single words just because I've seen agents try to, you know, put, you know, pool plus fence plus this plus that, and then nothing, they get no results. And so I, I usually recommend that you do it that way, or you use the traditional search fields in the MLS to search for things that you really want. Um, I, use the, I use that example for the remarks thing as a marketing, as a marketing tool. Because um, I really think that agents can take advantage of that. And then like when, when I'm looking for a house with a pool, I just go straight to the remarks and I type in pool. 
because I, I feel like you know smarter agents are gonna put you know enjoy a splash in the pool, and and that's what I'm gonna sell first is the one that's you know that that sounds sounds nice. So um, as opposed to check it out, you know the the typical remarks you know in old days were like you know check it out. You spend you know if you're gonna list something for three million dollars, you know you can surely spend a little bit more time than just put check it out. So so anyway, check it out. So anything else, Peggy? Yes, uh, there is. I'm gonna just reword this a little bit. Um, is um, does it have exact word to search or filter? Uh, for instance, fenced instead of fence or vice versa. Yes, you can search for the word fenced, but I would suggest you try to uh, search in the in the most common term. Um, so if you put fenced, yes, it, it'll bring up only those properties with the word fenced. But you might be missing something where someone, you know, may not use the ED on fenced. They might just write the word fence. And if you put fence, you're going to be missing those homes or those properties that have, um, that have, that don't have the word fence because they'll be looking specifically for fenced. So you might be missing a bunch of properties. So I would reduce it to the most common words or the com most common um, word that you think might be out there. Um, so that, that's what I typically do. Um, and and I, I, I get more results because obviously you want to, you know, of course, eliminate as many, you don't want to have a bunch of, a bunch of uh, properties show up, but I still would use the most common word and, um, and you'll, you'll, you'll see all the listings. Um, of course, obviously there could be houses in MLS where the, where the agent didn't bother to put the, you know, the fact that there's a fence in the public remarks. And so if you just use this as your search tool only, then you will miss properties that may have fences that they did not even talk about the fence in the public remarks. So keep that in mind also, because it only searches that that's public remark search only searches in the public remarks. It does not search the fence field at all. Thank you, Anthony. Uh, another uh, question. How, how do we do automatic emails to prospective customers? Um, I will tell you that today's um, course or today's presentation is, is not about automatic emails, but if you want to call me offline, I'll be happy to help you that um, directly so that we can uh, focus on with the topics that we're, that we're focused on today. So I appreciate the question, but that's something you could just call me directly, um, you know, and I'll be happy to help you with that offline. Okay, I have two more here. If I wanted to see pending, I would multi-select pending and active, it's possible. I now have to remove them myself. If they're pending, we will select pending and active. Let's fix this. It's more of a comment. Um, then there's another one. Can I search my all close closing listing? Can I search my all closing listing? Right now, um, we don't have any way to use quick searches to search by agent name. So the answer if you're, because we're talking specifically about quick searches today, so the answer to that question is no. Okay. Um, With, within the quick search parameter. So outside okay. of this, I have not researched that. So my, my, my topic today, but the preparation for this topic was specifically to quick searches. And then one more topic I wanted to show you guys, um, which I think you'll just, it'll just blow your mind. Thank you, Anthony, go ahead. Okay, so there's another feature um, and I sh I'm sure you've all seen it. So if you go to quick search and I'll just choose my um, single family for sale and you'll see this line right here that says MLS address or map overlay. And probably most of us ignore all of this and don't type anything in here. Okay. So I want to show you a, a feature that is, is not also commonly used um, by members of Flex, which there are 250,000, I believe, across the U.S. And so it's not commonly used. And so therefore um, it, it's a feature that I'd like to push more people to use because it's really nice, especially here on Guam. Um, so click on the browse feature. So I'm looking for, I wanna, I wanna try to find homes in Paradise Estates that are active and pending. So I, I think there's something up there, but I don't know what the street address is. I don't know the track number, maybe I don't know the track number. Maybe some agents didn't put the track number or the block number or whatever. I just want to see all the Paradise Estates. So there is a mapping, there's a, there's a map feature called a map overlay. And map overlays can be created for anything that you desire. 
So if you want to create a map overlay for, for just 10 houses in Dedido, you can do that. So I'm going to show you what I've done. Um, and um, it, this is a very, um, again, it's not widely used. So there are some, there, there are some challenges to get, to get it to be used by more people. But as an example, I'll just show you, show you the example first. Then I'm going to show you how to create your own map overlays. So I'm going to click Browse. When you click browse, you're going to see all of these. Um, if you click browse, you're probably going to see nothing. But I've created all of these map overlays for different subdivisions and condominiums. So if I go click on this and I click on Paradise Estates, and I click on that, and I click Polygon, um, it's going to go and, um, and there it is. It opened up Paradise Estates in Dedido, and it's opened up all the houses that are active and pending in Paradise Estates. So I'm sure that you guys probably love this because now you can get all the houses that are available for sale or for, for rent, or I'm sorry, for sale. I could also change the type, I can leave it as, as Paradise Estates right here. And I can now say, well, my buyer, my, actually I'm working for the tenant who wants to find our rental. So I changed my quick search to SFD for rent. And I click on that and all of a sudden it's gonna show me all of the properties um, Actually, I need to go back and do that again. SFD in Paradise Estates, and it'll bring up all the rentals um, in Paradise Estates. So, and they're all mapped. So I'm sure you guys will find some big value in this because you don't have to know that they're on Kai and Frank LG Castro or Kai and Eduardo Antalan or, you know, Tamio Clark or Frank LG, you know, Castro, et cetera, et cetera. Um, it just shows the map overlay and the map overlay incorporates all the listings. Of course, the big assumption here is that the agents are properly locating the geocodes on the maps. They're actually, you know, when they add the listing, they're actually picking the right location for the property, you know, approximate location, obviously not exact. And then, um, and then, so for example, if I was looking right now, um, I want to find a Royal Gardens for sale. So I'm going to go and that's a, that's a condo, condo townhouse. And I don't want to go searching for everything. I just want to go find it. I, I got a buyer looking for it. And I just want to show it to them. So I'm going to click on condo for sale, browse. And I'm going to go to Royal Garden subdivision, Polygon. And then boom, it's going to bring me um, right there. Sorry, it's, it's zoomed out. But there's Royal Gardens. And it's going to bring me anything in here that's inside of Royal Gardens map overlay. So there's this one right here, which is available for sale for 475,000. And I believe that is um, Mr. Nicholas over at Platinum. And there's one that's pending sale right here. Um, that's also um, for 325 in Royal Gardens. There's two in Royal Gardens. So I'm sure you guys can see huge value in this. And, and there may be, you know, I was, I was hoping we could even maybe get, um, get the association uh, to maybe hire someone to draw these map overlays for everyone to use, but I'll just but you can now do it yourself and and um, and then share it with members of your office, and I'll show you how to do that um, in a minute. But I want to give you one more example. So um, let's just say I'm looking. So I've, I've I've done these all already. So I've got someone who wants to buy a uh, paradise um, paradise, uh, and the answer to that question, Liz, is I cannot do that. I'm sorry. Um, it. I, I don't have, I can't guarantee that my, the work I did is accurate. So I, I don't want to take the risk, <laughs> but it's, and I can't export them. And it's, it's a long story. I've only shared these overlays with two agents in my office because currently the way that Flex lets you use this is you're unable to um, share with a group. You can only share one by one each map. So it's a pain. So um, it, it's a little bit painful to use this right now. I'm hoping that, that, um, you know, uh, we need someone who really knows the maps of these subdivisions to create these things. So again, I just, you know, one night I was playing the reggae music, nothing to do, and, <laughs> and decided, well, I have nothing to do, so I'll just create some maps. And all these over, these overlays are really cool, but you can turn on the satellite, and do the same thing you normally do, and see where the actual properties are at. Um, but this is like Paradise Estates. It could be totally wrong, by the way. So I don't, I'm a really kind of a, um, you know, not comfortable and I can't anyway, it won't let me share the maps. It's, it's, it's stressful because I'd love to share them with everybody, but it won't let me do that. I can only share it one map, one map at a time. So I've got like 30 or 40 created, 
And if I want to share them with, with 30 agents in my office, that's 1,200 shares. <laughs> so it, um, it, it's, it's going to be painful. So we, I, and I've, I've called and asked Flex if they could please, please uh, put this as a priority. But I'm, I'm just, you know, one realtor. And, you know, maybe if all of you would call me tomorrow morning, overload their, uh, yeah, Liz, exactly, 1,200. And that's just with the 30 people and the 40 I've created. Uh, that's, yeah, thanks, Liz. Love you, Liz. So um, you can also not just subdivisions, but I also did because I was like, you know, I want to, what's my Oak Towers? So I thought, well, there's all these other condos. People are always asking me questions about them. So I want to know all the Oak Towers units that are listed for sale without having to, you know, look for them. So I just clicked on, I just made one for Oak Towers and I started going crazy. And I clicked on Oak Towers. I did it, let me do that again because I had something else up there. And I click Polygon, and then it'll open up. Um, it's a little slow right now, but it is. Come on. There we go. So there's Oka Towers. So Oka Towers, um, you know, it's got this parking lot back here, and there's two units for sale in, or for rent, uh, for sale in Oka Towers. And if I wanted to try and find out uh, what was for rent, I could change it to to the for rent thing. So it's, it's really cool. So I've created a bunch of these. So Hyundai Mong Mong, Jonestown, Pier Resort, built Regency Villas, Royal Gardens, Tessio, you know, and, and I, I created them in order as people were asking. You know, people come up to me all the time and say, well, do you have anything in Villa Carmen? And I said, well, you know, I've got, I might have one. I think there's one list that I heard that Liz has one listed or Claire has one listed. And, you know, thankfully, you know, most of, I think most of them, um, of Villa Carmen, for example, is, is, is Redondo Francisco, Edward Francisco. So you're okay, there's only one street, but when you got all these other subdivisions with like five or six or 10 streets, you know, for example, I don't have Kaiser on here. I mean, I, I was trying to put Kaiser and I kept getting confused with Kaiser and League One. I thought I'm going to bed. So I, did, I didn't do that one. I was like, oh, this is going to be too much. But like Paseo de Oro, um, I did that one as an example. I'll change that back to single family so you can see what I mean. Um, and then I want to make sure I show you how to make your own because it's it's not it's not too too crazy. You just got to know what you're what you're doing. So um, I'll just show you Paseo de Oro as an example. I don't know if there's anything for sale there, but let's just go see. Um, there might be. And sometimes you'll get this little glitch where it doesn't open, but I can see this little pink thing right here. So I'll zoom in on it, and yeah, that's Paseo 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 de Oro, I think. Yeah, there. So there's nothing, there's nothing available in there, but it's, you know, Paseo de Oro and Villa Carmen or Carmen Memorial Driver in there, but there's nothing, nothing for sale in there at the moment. So, so now how do we do this? How do you create your own, um, your own overlays? Um, Cause it's going to be helpful for you either way. If you do it yourself or, or you, you know, may, maybe one thing you can do is divide it up in your office and say, okay, you 10 are going to do Tamuni, you 10 are going to do Dedido, you 10 are going to do Jigo. And then you just start, um, start doing it that way. I, I, what I did here is I did exactly that. I said, okay, this group is going to do Tumon and Tamuni. And, um, and really a lot of the, a lot of the um, and of course, Dededo has a lot of subdivisions and so does Jigo. And so you just, so as we go along, as we need the information is usually how we create them. So under preferences, we, we talked earlier about my quick searches. Well, now there's one here called my, my map overlays. I mean, there's actually a, quite a number of features in FlexMLS that we're not using um, yet with GAR, but we want to use them. And so, so the quick searches was one that we kind of was kind of forced on us and it's not, not bad, but then map overlays is there. It's kind of a, not, it's, it's almost like a, a cake that's, that, that's got the cake and it's got, you know, some frosting, but it's not completely finished yet. And so, so, but there's features you can still use. So for example, I've got all of these on here, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna help you make your own. So let's click on new. So you click on my map overlays and then click on new. And the next thing it's going to do is going to bring you a whole picture of the whole island of Guam. So by the way, if you don't know Guam, you're going to have a hard time with this. So you got to know what this is. You got to know that this is Guam, first of all. Um, so if you know that, then you're, you got, you're well on your way. So if you go up here, and I'm just going to make an example because I have not done this yet. So Astumbo Gardens. So let's say that we're doing Astumbo Gardens or Astumbo. So we're going to go here and we're going to make a, um, a map overlay for Astumbo. 
So if I go here and I, and I open up a stumble so I can see the whole stumble area, um, and maybe this part over here is also a stumble, but for right now, I'm gonna ignore that because I'm not sure. And some of you on here might, might know that, but I, I'm not sure, so I'm not gonna drag in areas I don't know. So you go down to the bottom here, there's a hand. When you click on the hand, it lets you move around. And then um, just ignore the plus for now, or ignore the eye, ignore the, the measuring. You can measure, um, that's another, another thing you can do, like you wanna measure from here to here, it'll help you do that. There's a lot of features on Flex that, we're, that are just amazing features that we can use, but we're gonna just take care of map overlays for the moment. So you click on this little trapezoidal thing here and you just click the first dot right here and you move it all the way over here. And I'm just gonna pretend that all of this is a stumbo. I'm probably gonna drag the stool into here too. And I'm just clicking every time I put a dot, I click and there, that is a stumbo. So now I just go up here and I click save. It's got my polygon and there's the shape. All it is click, click save and click a stumbo. And that's it, a stumbo subdivision, okay? And done, and I'm finished creating a stumbo. How is that? Now, I wanna look for houses in a stumbo. I go back to my quick search, okay? I'm gonna go up here, houses for sale. I'm gonna go right down here where it says MLS address or map overlay and go over here to browse. And lo and behold, there's a stumbo. I click a stumbo and I click on polygon and there it is. And there's, there's, lo and behold, in a stumble, there's one house for sale, which is $549,000 on Challenge Erencia. And there are two homes pending. So one thing, one other thing that's nice about this, um, again, we're assuming that the agents are locating their homes properly and they're not clicking on something like in Mingila where it starts, right? Because you want to make sure the houses are, are located. Um, using the location feature. And, and I really actually would like to, in the future, do another quick seminar on that because I know it was when you're, when you're looking and when you're driving around, when you get a phone call and someone calls you and says, oh, I'm, I'm, I'm looking at this house and I'm over here at Yona. Yona? You're in Yona? Okay, well, Jonya. You're in Jonya. Yes, and because the, because, and the house is in Jigo. But they're in Jonya because the agent has clicked on it and made the house in, jo in Jonya and they're following the, you know, the driving directions on her MLS. And instead of driving to Jigo, they're driving to Johnny and they're out there somewhere. And, and, they're, and you're like, oh my goodness. And of course you're embarrassed because they're calling you on your website and it's out there. But this feature um, obviously will, it, it'll, it'll fail also if you don't, if the houses are not placed correctly on the mapping thing. So you have to make sure that's done correctly. So um, I'll do that one more time because I think sometimes it's helpful to do a couple of these. So we'll go back to, ML, to the overlays again. So you go back to um, my map overlays one more time. Or make a new one. Um, you could also, where it says give to someone lives, that's what you were asking about earlier. It only lets you give it to one person at a time. So, and if you've got, you know, 50 people you wanna give that one overlay to, you gotta give it 50 times and then click next 50 times, click next 50 times, click next 50 times. So, you know, you usually give it to your, you know, all their favorite. I'm just kidding. You, know, you, you want to give it to everybody. But um, so I would call this right now, you know, something, just do it for yourself. Um, and then if you want to share it, of course, share it. But it, it's going to be just a lot of work or just come up with a group like, like we're trying to do here. But it's still, um, it's still painful. It, it, it is a little bit painful to, to do this. So let's go look at another subdivision. Let's go to Hyundai Mang Mang. So I think I did that one already. So let's, let's go to Nimitz Hill Estates. I think that's a beautiful area. Let's go there. So we're to Nimitz Hill. Um, and there's Nimitz Hill. I think that's Nimitz Hill. Looks like Nimitz Hill. So um, again, you can turn on the satellite to make sure you know where you're at and so you don't put the cemetery in there. So you click on this thing again, this little blue box here that shows up. Uh, and it even says a little message there, draw a polygon for searching. So you can go here and click on, click on this because that's not part of Nimitz Hill Estates. But this is, you can click here, click here, click here, click over here, um, click here, click all of this, click over here, all the way down here, 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 then back to here. Actually, I'm just gonna go all the way to here and then I'm done. 
So there's my Minnesota so the states. That's what that is. And I'm going to click here and type Nimitz Hill Estates Subdivision. And I'm done. So now I've got another map overlay. And I can go search on this. So if I go back in here and click on Quick Search, Single Family for Sale. I'm not going to fill out anything here now. So I click on here and go over to Nimitz Hill Estates. Uh, look for it down here somewhere. There it is. Um, click Polygon. And it's going to open up Nimitz Hill Estates Subdivision. And there it is. And as you can see, beautiful agents have um, marked one house. Looks like one house is marked in here. And it's pending sale already. So that's Nimitz Hill Estates. We can turn back on the satellite and click on that house. And it is pending, 425000 So it's nice also if you are an agent and you're trying, let's say you're, you, someone calls you and says, I want to buy a house in Nimitz Hill or whatever, and you've got the subdivision, you, you have it instantly, you know what's going on in that subdivision. Because guess what else you can do? Because what's showing up now, by the way, is it's, what's showing up here is what's, what's, what's currently active and pending. Well, guess what else you can do? You can change the status to close. So you can go to close and look for comps. And now you can see what's going on in Nimitz Hill Estates. So you've got, um, you've got these, I don't know what the red one stands for. Hmm, that's new, I've never seen that one. Withdrawn, I'm sorry, that's withdrawn. So, but you can now see that there's some closings in there. So now that you're doing your comps, oh my goodness gracious, and your listing is over here, you can say, wow, that, that, that closed comp is right next to my house. And you know, otherwise you would have probably never known that without staying up till like four o'clock in the morning, like I, I do on occasion and trying to figure all these weird things out. Um, you know, that this is my life, so things. <laughs> so, um, but anyways, I, I know that you guys find value to this. And I really, I really am hoping that somehow we can get Flex to make this um, Liz um, and, and Claire and, and many of you who have now messaged me directly to help, let them help us to um, share these things with each other without it being such a, so painful. So, um, because it is a little painful to share them now, but you can always, you know, just create your own right now. That's, that's pretty much what I did. Cause you know, I just, you know, it was, you know, when you, when you wanted, especially I was doing comps the other day, but there's gotta be an easier way. And I just did this and you can even, even change the date. Like if I want to go back and look at history and you know, like 2019, it updates that map for you immediately. So the map is all updated and all the houses from 2019 pop in. So it's kind of cool. And, and, you, and it really saves us a lot of time. Um, I'm surprised that a lot, of, a lot more of the Flex MLS um, you know, sites aren't, aren't using this because it's, it's actually really cool. Um, so I'm really pretty much done with this particular part of the presentation. This was kind of a bonus. I know that many of you um, have sent some questions in. And I appreciate that and I've answered them to the best of my ability. But if you have any other questions right now, we can open it up for questions and, uh, and there you go. Anthony, yes. I just, feel, um, um, I'm gonna read through the questions received. However, please feel free to, to simply say that you've uh, already answered it or if you wanna repeat sure. the, wanna repeat it or if it's not, uh, if it's not part of today's uh, training. So I have, how, how do you add property locations such as Paradise Estates and Overlay? Um, okay, so we just we went over that, but since the question came up, I can, is there a bunch of other questions, Peggy, or just a few more? How did you create the boundaries? Can overlays okay. I'll, do that. I'll do that again. So you click on menu, okay? And then um, you say the rosary three times. No, I'm just kidding, but you might, you might want to. It might give you a headache. So, you click on map overlays, scroll down to map overlays. And yes. Thanks, Liz. So click on map overlays, and then you're gonna get this screen that looks like this, and it says my map overlays. And ignore the list here, because your list is gonna probably be blank. You just click on new, and now you're gonna select the area on the island where you want to um, do your subdivision. So let's just say we wanna do, um, uh, let's say Bergata Heights, that's a famous one, or Laddie Heights, uh, let's just do Bergata Heights. So we'll go to Bergata Heights and you zoom in on it. And at the bottom of your screen, uh, you have this, these, you have a hand here to help you move the screen around and a plus and an I and a little protractor 
and this trap, this sort of trapezoidal looking thing here, you click on that and it says draw a polygon for searching. So you click that and you move it up here. And now um, what I like to do also is turn on the satellite because sometimes I can't remember where Barragata Heights is because there's all this other stuff going on. But anyways, I just want Barragata Heights. So this is what I believe Barragata Heights is. And so some of you might say, oh no, that's not Barragata Heights, but I'm just gonna mark it. And you're basically moving your mouse around like this and you're marking these areas um, where you think, what you think is Barragata Heights. And you just keep going until you are, you know, you keep marking like this and this and this. And I don't think that's Barragata Heights. But you can go down to here and that's not Barragata Heights. You know what that is. You really have to know what you're doing. I mean, I, I can't, I mean, I might be wrong. This might not be, all of, some of this might be some other subdivision. But now I have Barragata Heights and I can save it and call it um, Barragata Heights. Um, I'm just going to call it test because I've got another Barragata Heights for waiting. So now you've saved it. So um, did that answer the question or we want me to do it again? Perhaps you can do another example just to um, read Another your... example? Sure. Okay. So we'll go back to the menu again, scroll down to my map overlays. And then um, it's going to open up the screen that says my map overlays. And then go down to the bottom and click on new. And then it's going to open up the picture or the screen with, the, with the, all of the island there. And you scroll, you zoom in to what you, where you want to go. So let's just um, let's just do the Aganya Heights. Um, yeah, let's do Aganya Heights because that that's a good one too. And actually, sometimes it's good to have all the villages. So we'll just do Aganya Heights. And again, um, excuse me if I sort of grab Senahanya in the process, but I want to make it. I want to simplify this. So we're in Aganya Heights, and now I want to I want to make an overlay for parts of Aganya Heights because you don't have to. You don't have to even do it based on a subdivision or a condo. You can just do it on, on an area that you feel that you want to be able to search by. So I'm going to go ahead and click on this, this thing down here that says create polygon for searching. I'm going to move the mouse so that this little blue dot is going to stop here. And I'm going to take it, the first point I want, and I'm going to move it to the second point, to the third point. And as I move, it starts to draw the overlay, which is this purple area that's appearing on your screen. So I'm just going to go all the way out here. Um, and of course, I'm, I, I know that this is definitely not a Ganya. All of this is not a Ganya Heights. Some of this probably said on yet. So bear with me on that part. And then I'm going to go over here and I'm done. When you're done, on the last dot, you double click it. And then the, then the overlay is created. So then you can save it. I'm going to save this as a Ganya Heights. Uh, I'll just call it a Ganya Heights overlay. You can call it whatever you want. And then it's saved. You want me to do that again, Peggy? Yes. Um, so this may, may cover. Uh, earlier, you also, just in case for others that are fairly newer, um, earlier the, it looks different because you turned on the satellite, right? Yes, I did. I Sometimes, I, sometimes I'm not sure about the, the, the areas because you can't really see the outline with the map like this. You can't see where, where the house ends or begins. So sometimes I'll turn on the satellite. Um, and even that sometimes, because our satellite imagery for Guam is, is not super clear, but it's clear enough that I can see, for example, I missed a house over here or something like that. So yes, I did. I turned on the satellite because I wanted to um, get better clarity. Yes, okay. correct. Now, so this one is asking, um, can overlays be shared and um... If you create a polygon and save it, will it show each time you browse? Yes, you have to apply it. So for example, when I go back to the quick search, um, as an example, if I go back into the quick search now, and I've already, um, quick search, come on, give me quick search, there, quick search. So if I'm looking for a house for sale in Aganya Heights now, all I have to do is click on SFD for sale click browse and now that Aganya Heights overlay will show up and I click on that and it'll show the word polygon. I click polygon and it'll bring up um, again that Aganya Heights area and it'll show me all the houses in Aganya Heights that are for sale or for that are pending. 
because the status code right now says active and pending. So yes, it will show me the houses that are active, uh, which is one right here for 585,000 and one over here uh, that is for 355,000. So yes. Anything else? Thank you, Anthony. Um, <clears throat> yes, this um, this is being recorded and it can be accessed in our website. Just give us a couple of days uh, before we upload it. Uh, and Flex MLS is indeed open uh, Central Standard Time uh, uh, for those that would like to contact them directly. Uh, Monday through Friday, uh, Central Standard Time, uh, 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. Oh, or I let me let me double check the end time. I think that has changed already. Uh, is there any a video on this also, Peggy, under guided help? That's correct. Um, video on, on this topic as well, which I have not viewed the video, um, mm -hmm. but of course there's lots of videos on on Flex that are available for for help if you need extra training and all that kind of cool stuff. Correct. Uh, there are a lot of uh, archived videos that our members can browse at their own pace, at their own time, and go through it over and over until they get familiar with what it is that interests them. So uh, please feel free to access that because it is really at your fingertips. And uh, the additional trainings that we're doing, such as today, really is an added bonus, if anything. But you have all those trainings within your reach already by accessing the training, uh, the videos uh, in our uh, in uh, Flex MLS. Um, was there anything else, Anthony, that you would like to add? Um, no, but I, I would like to mention that every one of you out there in, in Zoom land has something wonderful to share with our members of our association. So I would encourage all of you um, to come up with a topic and contact Peggy uh, for, one of the, for a session just like this, because I think we all have something to share with each other to help us um, you know, in our business. And obviously the, the faster we sell our listings, the quicker we get our checks and the quicker we can just go get some more listings and sell those too. So um, I encourage all of you to contact Peggy or the MLS committee and, um, or, or whoever that you wanna call at the car office and, and schedule yourself into something like this because it's wonderful. This is really wonderful. I thanks for the opportunity to share because I think that's what we're here for. I think this is a great opportunity for the first meeting what the MLS committee for 2021 can do is um, identify the needs that you have uh, to include the needs that you have uh, conveyed at in this afternoon's training on the areas that we would like to add and uh, improve upon or activate whichever that is so I think those are good to create into a list and present that to Flex MLS for their uh, consideration. Yeah, I, we really need to push them to try to help us to get this so we can share these things easier because it's it really, it's really, um, it, it, it's, it's really helpful. I, I can tell you, I've been using it and I've really, um, I find it really helpful. Of course, obviously once in a while I have to double check, make sure that I'm not missing listings that were not properly mapped. So, so just to keep that in mind, you, you might miss some listings with these map overlays when the agent did not take the time to, um, you know, or they didn't know, maybe they don't know how to do it. Um, and, if, and if anyone wants a training, um, a short training session on how to map your properties, I'll be happy to help you with that too. And so, um, and I'm sure many of, many people on here know how to do that already. So just, just check out the, uh, the your friends on, on in DAR and I'm sure you, you can get that knowledge because it really helps all of us when the customer can find your listing. <laughs> um, having having met with people who were sitting in the middle of Jonia, which should have been the Jigo. So, Anthony, thanks, thanks. Uh, uh, One more, I have another question. Uh, uh, like Paris Acres, the new USPS address doesn't include the word Paris Acres. How can we search active properties if the word Paris Acres isn't there? Um, actually, right now, um, we are working on a new feature in MLS, which will allow you to search by subdivision. 
And once that feature is activated, then you'll be able to search by Paradise or Paris Acres as a subdivision. So that that currently is not available. Um, so you would have to know uh, what you're searching for. And so when I when I do a search, um, this is like a general question. I'll search first for the zip code because sometimes I you know especially I mean in Jigo, there's probably only one, two, three maybe condos in all of Jigo. You really don't have a lot of, it's not like you're searching for Tamuni or Mingila where there's lots of condos, but Jigo, you pretty much can narrow it down with just a few condos or a few towns or a few townhouses. And so um, it makes it a little bit, a bit easier. So I would just search by the zip code and start there. And if anybody else has any other suggestions, but later on, you'll be able to search by subdivision and search by Paris acres. And, and really the postal codes don't really match what, what we do anyways. Um, they're, they're not, they really don't relate um, to our subdivision names uh, pretty much at all. I mean, for the most part, maybe some do, but most don't. Are we good, Peggy? Okay, um, let me just repeat the, in case our members would like to reach Flex MLS, and that would be Monday through Friday, 8 a.m. to 9 p.m. Central Standard Time. Uh, and that's 12 a.m. to 1 p.m. Uh, Guam time uh, with daylight savings time. And that's Monday to Friday. Yes, and they're very helpful, very, very helpful. So, okay, thanks a lot, everybody. And you guys all have a wonderful day. Happy selling, sell, sell all of my listings. <laughs> thank, thank you. you. Thank you, Anthony. Really appreciate it. Thanks for the invite. Thank you.